when my iPad gets wrath nowadays, I don't feel too good about it either. But when I just started playing Hearthstone, it felt so good. Because it actually matters less than it seems in Hearthstone. But I don't know. It always feels good for me because the Acolyte, I always think of it as just cycling no matter what happens. The only time I feel really bad is when it gets cabaled or like, I don't know, like brawled away or something. I'm actually going to drop True Silver because against Paladin, you pretty much just need to remove Juggler with the Blue Guild Warrior. I'll probably... I mean, I guess True Silver is pretty good in Shredder, that's the only card. For the most part, though, I just kind of want to get like Acolyte of Pain and Doomsayer or something. Pyromancer is a lot better. Is Freeze Mage favored? Freeze Mage is definitely favored against more like Paladin in the latter. I almost never went against Freeze Mage and Ladder when it was uncommon. But when I was playing some tournaments, it was actually okay for me. I'm not sure then. Looks like it's a mirror. I'm gonna play Acolyte just because... I don't curve out, but getting multiple cards is so good. If you only keep Murlocs in your opening hand and Mulligan and everything else, it's actually pretty close to the matchup. But there's no way you really can do that on ladder. Actually, I've been kind of doing that on ladder nowadays. Just been keeping Dooms here and probably in Blue Gold Warrior. And then Murlocs. Because if you can just keep all Murlocs, it's not that bad the matchup. Maybe get a little punished. Seems like it's not a mirror. Still get two cards, that's a weak turn for him. Gonna use the buy turn, go in turn four. It's not unkillable, you can kings and kill it, but if it goes off, I can soul vigil. I don't, have, I don't have anything else to do this turn. And I don't think with Cog Hammer it's a Murloc deck. It must be some kind of tempo oriented deck where he wants this turn. <laughs> Nothing else to do, I have second consecrate. Mostly, because I'm playing mains, he gets to utilize his weapon to clear. I want to have as clean of a board as possible for Sludge Vulture. And also, if he's running this kind of Cog Hammer deck, he could have like Kings and Old Man and stuff. So this turn's a lot weaker if he doesn't have any minions. <laughs> I have this option again. Last time I was really good. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know if I'll do it this time. Oh, he is a Murloc deck. Maybe. It's okay for me too. <coughs> I need board control in this matchup. Whoever has some board control is like usually a little bit ahead. Because uh, you can snowball the board and not really overcommit. Also, if you have some Murlocs on board, it's really hard for them to play Murlocs. I don't know, I might wait for him to play War Leader and just charge it down for four. I think in this matchup, the only board clears you need are. Like, you actually need are the ones after any fin. Actually, yeah, I like this. You don't even need board clear after any fin. No one can really play any fin unless it's lethal, because if you play any fin, the other person just kills you with their any fin after, after you have all the war leaders on board. So I like just clearing here. If I just play Beltry, constantly has good trades. And I can, if he, if it does end up where any fins, I can just equality Pyro at that point, probably. It's really important to be slightly ahead in this matchup. There's been no Murlocs played other than the Finley. It can escalate very quickly though, with both people playing Murlocs. I still think he has to be a Murloc deck, right? Or how can he win playing just ra random control pally? He has to have some kind of win condition. Oh, it's he might be a Reno deck. Well, that's like a free win then. Reno Pally just. The rules. The 
Control power can stay alive forever, but against me, I'll always be able to double any anything for lethal. So even if he's a Reno Pally, running individual threats to win the game, like Shredder and Big Shredder, the six mana Shredder, maybe Tyrion. I don't think he can win this matchup almost ever. It's like an awful matchup for him. Seems like a Reno deck act the more I look at this. He can clear with equality, but there's no way for me to keep this alive against equality anyways. The only weird thing about this game is I have no card draw. Deck. I only have one peacekeeper. I'm gonna clear this with uh, my weapon so I can peacekeeper bigger minion. I use all the consecrates already, but I have two two power mancers, so I can use these two effects for big minions. To stall out for my laying hands. Or Soul Mitchell number two. I'm not gonna overcommit to Consecrate right now, since it's for three with this totem. I was going to say I can just take the damage and heal for 8, but if I heal for 8, I probably want to play these together on the same turn that I'm too weak to consecrate. So I want to split up my 3-3s three into two different turns anyways. <laughs> it's the counter to heal bot. Just heal them to full. Nothing's really going on. Nothing I play will really break this board. I'm just gonna pass. Now that he has a 3 5. I mean, the only thing I could break the board is if I play both Healbot and Warleader, but at this point, it's not worth it to play both. Oh, that's all my Murlocs. There we go. Now I can just set up for OTK. I don't have second anything, but it's one of my next eight cards, and I still have land hands. Also, he's easy quality. He might not even be able to clear, especially since I get a Sir Finley as well. So I get six pretty big Murlocs. <coughs> he's not consecrating. I wonder what his hand is. Probably Reno, and I was gonna say consecrate. I don't know if he has it anymore. Or maybe just saving it. It's not great consecrate anyways. He probably has consecrate. It's actually pretty smart because it can't uh, kill the suicide by dooms here.
Got a three-round mission from BZ Bieber. What do you do to combat Tilt? I don't get too bad in Hearthstone, but it wrecks me in League. I think you just have to live a healthy lifestyle. I feel like Tilt is not something you try to combat. Just if you do or you don't. I'm just gonna wait for a second. Anything for lethal? Does anything matter here? Yeah. Let's do this. Let's clear the whole board and do this. Uh, these minions don't really play well with anything because I can't suicide them, but I mean, if you think about it, these do enough damage where he'll just be dead. He just can't wait. Like, I don't have it second like anything anyways. And he just leaves up this board forever, I'll just kill him anyways. It's not like he has tank up. Hmm. Battle. Does that even matter? Uh, I think it's five, four, three. No, nah, it doesn't matter. Let me go ahead and slow and vigil here. So next turn, I have anything. I don't want to play too much here. Probably just go face. I mean, the reason why I didn't suicide board is I could suicide it on the Adric. I'll probably just see quality here. Now I can't play any other minions because of anything. Last turn, I like there's no way you could suicide his own guy, so I could just uh, play other minions. But now I can't play anything. I think I'll one shot him. It, it, it kind of depends. I might get two Finleys. I don't know the math exactly, but I think I can't lose anyways. Because if he's a Reno deck, then I don't think he can even clear my second anything. He's already used his quality. I'm almost out of cards. For justice. I will fight with honor. I won't go so far as to coin out a Doomsayer with no follow up here. I'll definitely play a turn 2 though. It's just turn 2 if you played another minion, it would be significantly more dangerous. But So, Flame Imp into Life Tap, probably still Zoo. It's hard for it to be anything else. Even the Life Tap here doesn't really tell me anything that it's not Zoo, because he probably just can't kill Doomsayer. Although, he has some chance of getting Death Rattles that he didn't take. I wasn't really planning on Consecrating this turn. It's pretty tempting though. I want to save the Consecrate still. Especially after drawing this guy. I feel like it's hard for him to develop... Like, both kill this guy and develop enough of a board.
definitely have to value the coin over a 1-1. One, one. Going to these turns, 1-1s, one, one, so I don't think will generally do anything. It doesn't re work that well with the fr uh, with Peacekeeper effects either. Wow, it's playing so weak here that I, it's hard for me to even... I never had this problem where I have so many cards against the zoo. Probably just get this heal in. I'm not going to worry about laying hands for a while. I have too many cards. I'd rather not burn Peacekeeper effect here, even though I have so many. We'll see. We can just use them one by one later on. Okay, well, that's an interesting game. Four power overwhelmings. And, oh my god, I, I, I did not think I was going to die there. It, was, it, it didn't even cross my mind for a millisecond. New warrior card, Blood Warriors. Add a copy of each damaged friendly minion to your hand. Oh, that's interesting. They just took out some of the strongest whirlwind effects like Death So this is like more balanced now than before when Death was in the game. That could be really uh, scary with Patron. I didn't think Patron is still going to be a deck without Death Spite though. But that's actually interesting because if you play Blood Warriors on Grim Patron, each Patron gets you an actual like real Grim Patron on like, each token. So you get like four or five Grim Patrons in your hand at a time, potentially. Could also just give you a ton of value. I don't know if a warrior generally needs a ton of value. You can always just go greedier, but... Probably have to think a little bit more about it. Buying or selling. <laughs> you shall not pass. This actually could still be anything. I don't even know if it's zoo. Do you have the Because this is a oh, actually it's probably zoo with uh, two peddlers. It's not an incredibly fast opening though. Could be a double peddler, uh Okay, I don't think it's it's probably a dull peddler Mally lock or some kind of power rolling burst lock. Get back. By the power of Ragnarok, I I was gonna say, basically, because I'm probably playing a 6 drop next turn, if I don't chill them here, I'm taking a lot of damage. So I'm taking the damage over 2 turns, and then I still need to deal with the 2 2 after. So I think the shield slam's worth it. Especially since I think this is some kind of combo lock with uh, power, power roaming faceless combo is the most likely based on what I'm seeing right now. Reno is unlikely because it's double peddler and with the amount of times he's tapping, also playing Emperor, definitely can't be Zoo. This matchup should be pretty good from this position onwards. Uh, I have turn 8 just car with 4 armor. Probably can play shield main this turn. So many possibilities. Yeah. 
evaporating the pain. Yes. I have no time Get back. for games. I'm gonna need to greed this turn. Cause I don't have enough damage to kill the shield main. I don't wanna constantly play scared from this turn onwards. Just still kinda early in the game. Let none survive. This should be good enough. Uh, I I don't really want to armor up here instead of shield block because my hand is kind of bulky still. Most of these cost so much mana. I want to get more options here, especially just card can just armor up twice in that turn. I have no time for games. Oh, I actually could have slammed first, huh? Because I didn't I didn't have to kill slam first. If I slammed first, I would have still guaranteed the steal on Twilight Drake because his Belcher would proc after. I actually like this the best still, because if I play Sludge Belcher, it's a little bit harder for him to steal something right away. Uh, but thing is, against this kind of power roaming double combo deck, Belcher is actually kind of a really nice roadblock, and I'm valuing this pretty highly, so I don't really want to throw it straight into Sylvanas. I can deal with a 4-4 Drake fairly easily next turn, and even curving out while doing it, because I can slam it and then attack with the weapon, belt your armor up, or shield maiden armor up. So many possibilities. I mean no matter what, it would be free something over two turns. Play Belcher. Might get something anyways. Um otherwise I try to kill it this turn. Can do some like, trade into Sylvanas and slam and then kill my own guy, but I don't think it really makes any sense. I'm not gonna value brawl br brawl that high in this matchup. Although with the Sunfear, it actually looks like a normal handlock. We still have another brawl though. This turn was uh, like able to get out of control because he has three minions this turn. I can only kill one turn. Nothing was slammable, so it's kind of easy to fall super far behind from that position. Who knows what secrets will uncover? I see. His big power turn here. So many possibilities. Probably need to start cycling and see what we can get. Uh, for now, we can slam this attack, but I want to try to slam the 3 3. Okay, shield sounds very good. If I want to swing a death bite, we can. There's no reason for us to have to swing a death bite this turn, first of all. Actually, I like this the best uh, to go face here because he has a lot of cards and so it's likely he has all the options open to him. And if I make one trade, he can just uh, Hellfire, trade both one to one and Hellfire. Hellfire is a very poor card against War, so it's giving him a good opportunity to Hellfire is like good for him. 
he wants to be able to use Hellfire. Shadow Flame, so he used Shadow Flame, a little better trade for him, but Shadow Flame is also a much more valuable card than Hellfire. That's not what I wanted to see. We were going to have to win this game through either Ysera or Grom combo or uh, fatiguing him out. There's probably Draxus I have to worry about. Sometimes like a Harrison could be good, but kind of running low on cards. At least I hope he doesn't have Siphon Soul. If he actually has to trade, kind of takes probably enough damage out. It's like 15 damage and I also get some damage on his minions. I have to save the big game hunter here. This game can be anyone's game, actually. Uh, it's still very hard for me to beat Jaraxxus, I think, but it's getting to the point where it's hard for him to play around fatigue. Once they're in fatigue, even if they have Healbot left, it's just so easy to one-shot them with Grom, and then the fatigue kills them. So he doesn't have Jaraxxus yet, or maybe he doesn't want to play it. Might be playing second Molten first. I've got the beast in my sights. So I'm hoping his Jaraxxus is low and his card list. Okay, there it is. He have last turn. I got kind of, uh, I don't know, but I guess kind of lucky that he didn't get the Emperor Draxus either, because that's a huge swing. I wish I had. Um, death Spite instead here, so I can just start Death Spiting and then activating Grom. For now, they have like the monkey and stuff, where I might not have mana to play Grom after, and he's already his big game hunter. It seems like he's probably not running Siphon Soul. Uh, I gu I'm guessing his last cards are Sun Fury Argus, at least, pretty heavily. Sun Fury Argus Healbot, maybe something like Hellfire number two. It's not a Reno deck, uh, but maybe something. Some kind of cards like that is more likely to be in his hand, taunt givers and AoE. Okay, so we fatigue ourselves for six, but we win the game. <laughs> I guess that's... Wait, wait, do we win the game? Because we can activate Grom, it's just not enough. No. So if we draw six, it's like drawing seven next turn, 
One, two, three. No. I'm taking one plus two plus three. I'm taking six damage. I must that belongs in a museum. Oh, I missed lethal. I forgot he was gonna fatigue. If I if he was fatiguing, I would have just bash Grom for that last two damage. For some reason, I can't get that one because he had thirteen. Yeah, this is fine. The more I think, about it, I definitely should Harrison regardless, though, because um, if he plays like I don't have any more brawls, right? So if I let him build up and then start Argusing and stuff, I can lose on tempo. So even though I'm kind of taking fatigue damage, I'm actually kind of saving myself a little bit, a little bit of damage from the weapon that I killed as well. 